first. Church, we are so glad you are joining us today for worship. Just a few announcements before we begin. Uh, today is our annual meeting, today being January 31st. At 10.30 a.m., you can join us on Zoom, either by joining us through the Zoom program or by calling in on the phone. That information should be either mailed to you or in your email right this morning. So you can join us this morning for the annual meeting. Thank you to all of you who have registered beforehand. We appreciate that. That'll make our jobs easier. If you haven't registered, you are still welcome to join. We also have a few other events coming up, including uh, two different studies that are currently happening. One is called Creating a Beloved Community, uh, where you can read the devotion on Monday night or Monday, in preparation of a conversation on Thursday with Paul Llewellyn over Zoom at 7 o'clock. You can also join the Spiritual Growth Group as they talk about the book Learning to Walk in the Dark, a spiritual reflection on what can we learn about the darkness, a book written by Barbara Brown Taylor. You can join either of these groups if you need more information on how to get connected. Go ahead and let us know. If you're thinking, hasn't that already started? Do, you know, can I join now? Yes, yes you can. You can still join now even if you haven't been a part of earlier conversations. And then you please uh, look at our, our newsletter that's come out for February because we've got some good information in there including 
about Lent and what we are looking forward to for this Lent. If you can believe it, Ash Wednesday is on February 17th. And so we will have uh, some plans there that I'll invite you to read about. And then we will have as well, Wednesday gatherings for Lent that I encourage you to read about. And we'll talk more about in future Sundays. All right, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Welcome to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This moment we will give thanks for baptism if you have a bowl of water. At the end, I invite you to mark your forehead with the cross. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given the honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to mark the cross on your forehead, remembering that you are a beloved child of God, loved and forgiven. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, there's nothing worth more that will ever come. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you 
are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Today our first reading comes from Psalm 111. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright in the congregation, great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. Give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. And our gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 through 28. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit was convulsing him, and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Here ends the Gospel reading. Hi kiddos, so glad to have you joining us for worship today. If you want to take a moment to read the story in your World Study Bible, here is the page. You can turn to there, or you might have heard me tell the stories and read from uh, when I was talking about the scripture earlier. But today we're going to talk about Psalm 111, and it says, Praise God with all your heart. With all yourself, all your being, praise God. Now the word praise is one that we use in the church a lot. It's kind of like give thanks. And maybe you give thanks with prayers or songs or with moving your body and dance. You can praise God in a lot of ways. And you can give thanks to God for a lot of things. And I wonder, what would you give thanks to God for today? Would you give God thanks for school? Uh, I don't know, it depends on who you are. Would you give thanks for maybe some of your toys, for your family, for food, for being in your home? There are a lot of things in which we can give God thanks, even sometimes just the fact that there's maybe snow if you like snow, or maybe for the sun that shines. 
There's a lot of things in which we can say thank you to God with prayers, with song or dance, if you like to dance, just saying how awesome it is that you've given us these things. And sometimes it's good for us to remember those awesome things that God's given us. In today's story of the gospel, we hear of a guy who was healed by Jesus. And he was made whole again. He was made better. And he had a lot to give thanks to God for that he was made better. And so it can be either the small things or it can be the big things. But part of our life of faith and following God and Jesus is to say thank you and to praise God. So let us pray now, giving thanks to God for all that he's given us, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, we give you thanks for our family, our friends, our toys, our food, for the sun and the snow. We give you thanks for it all. In your name we say, Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Here comes the sun by the Beatles. I love that song. It always brightens my day. I was surprised to hear of how it's being used in our local hospitals. Now, I don't know if I first heard this story, if it was talking about a hospital in Des Moines or in Iowa City, but it was about how the doctors and nurses and the hospital staff were searching for ways to celebrate. They had been caring for COVID patients for a long time. And as you know, that's a long haul of care and sometimes patients don't recover. And there was not always a lot to celebrate at that time. That is until someone had the brilliant idea to do what they do when a baby is born and they play a song over the loudspeaker. Now you can see in this video from KCCI Channel 8 at the Mary Greeley Medical Center in Iowa City, them playing the song, Here Comes the Sun. They are playing this song as they take someone off of the ventilator. It's a moment of celebration. Now this person isn't entirely cured or healed. They aren't headed on their way home, but it's a moment of healing and progress, a moment to celebrate when it can seem like there are days upon days when there is nothing to celebrate. And so you can feel their joy palpable as they sing and celebrate this person being taken off of the ventilator. It makes me think of the psalmist today in Psalm 111, give thanks to God with all your heart or praise to God with all your heart. Now the word heart isn't exactly what we might think of as that thing beating in your chest, but heart is meant to be this entire wholeness of all your being. It is the source of a person's thoughts and feelings, the seat of reason, understanding and imagination. It is the conscience and wellspring of emotion. It is what makes up you completely, entirely. So when we hear the psalmist say, give thanks to God with all your heart, it's all your being, just as these nurses are singing and clapping and rejoicing in this person's success, the step forward towards healing. Now we don't all have major health milestones to celebrate, but we can look to our kitchen just to find something for which to recognize God in. And it's not something you might expect in your kitchen. That of a simple onion. You see in the psalm, you hear fear, Lord, but often it's meant to be look at God with awe and reverence. Not necessarily a trembling fear, but awe and reverence. And Frank Capone in his book, 
the supper of the lamb, lamb looks at awe, with awe, at an onion. He suggests that you take a full 60 minutes to just observe this onion. A cook who happens to also be an Episcopalian priest notes how when you look at an onion, you assume that it is this round circular figure, but it's not perfectly round, but it starts from the roots, moving up vectors to the tip. One bloom after the other, they build upon each other. And if you look closely at your onion, you see that paper thin skin that's on the outer side of that onion. Dry, deliberately dry with intention and function to be so, not as a failure, but as a function to be dry to protect the innerness, the moistness of the onion. Now, if you cut that onion, you see each layer building upon layer and the juice of that onion that just dribbles out, the contrast between the juice of the inside of the onion and the outside dryness. You can even smell the onion right now as I cut into it. And if you cut it lengthwise, you'd see that bloom factor as well. Now I'm not gonna go on for an hour talking about an onion, but this is just a glimpse into how Capone looks at this onion with reverence and awe at God's creation. Something that we often dismiss as something tasty to add to a dish, but a little bit of hassle to chop and get ready for a menu. What is there in our lives that we have to look with awe and wonder at today? What is there within our lives that we have to praise God and give thanks to God, whether it be the moment of a healing success or that of an onion? The psalmist gives thanks to God for how God has been present with the people of Israel through the flood, through the liberation of the Israelites from bondage in Egypt, to that of the joyful return of the Israelites after exile. Now the Psalms are not absent of laments. They also raise up moments when they wish things would be better, when they call on God to make things better. But those Psalms are also matched with these Psalms of praise and thanksgiving. So what do you have to praise God for today, even maybe in the midst of the laments of your life? For which do you give thanks? Is it in an onion? Is it in looking at your baby grandchild yawn or laugh? Is it in the use of technology like Zoom that allows you to meet with friends and family and for us to gather at our annual meeting today? Does your heart rejoice in the fact that somebody has beat cancer or is in, in a moment of healing in your family? Do you give God thanks for just the smallest of things like waking up today? having a cup of coffee, looking at the sunshine. There's a lot for which we give thanks. And in the story of Mark, we hear of someone who has every reason to give thanks to God. We hear of the man who came into the pews of that synagogue only to hear Jesus teaching that day. And upon recognizing him, the unclean spirit spoke out, saying, I know who you are, Holy One. And just with his words of authority, Jesus commanded those spirits to leave, and they did. That man was made whole again, healed, a part of the community again. That man had a new life before him with these unclean spirits removed. Jesus did not shy away from 
him and his, his troubles, his challenges, but walked into the moment with him and healed him. Just as God walks into the muck with us and the things that are not perfect, are not great, the laments we have, and tries to heal us, to offer us a moment of hope and healing, a moment of transformation. Jesus does not abandon us when we feel like we are alone to the unclean spirits, to the things that separate us from others and from God, but draws close. Is that not something for which we can give praise for the works of God, the presence of God here and among us? I give thanks for the work God has done here in grace this past year. We have had challenges, yes. We've been faced with things we never imagined we would face. But we have gathered together to still do the work of God in this place through new and inventive ways of worshiping online, to gathering on Zoom, to the works of our our Grace Visitors Team and our Children, Youth, and Family Committee and our Worship Committee and our Council and Small Groups, we have strived to serve God and our neighbor in new and inventive ways. I praise God for God's presence in this year and the work he has done through us, for the people we've reached that we may never know about. Perhaps there is something for which you can give praise today. Perhaps we can look at awe in an onion in the sunset, in our family and our friends and technology and say, wonderful are the works of God. May our heart whole being praise him. Amen. <laughs> the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. Let all who hear now to his temple draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who all wondrously reigning, and as on wings as an eagle uplifting sustaining. Have you not seen all that his needful has been, sent by his gracious ordaining? Praise to the Lord who will prosper your and defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Wonder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend you. Praise to the Lord, for let all that is in adore him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again, gladly forever adore him. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day to be able to gather electronically as your grace family. We give you praise. We hear and meditate on your word. We offer prayers 
together. How blessed we are for this opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, today we do the organizational work of being your church. Help us dream visions, make wise decisions, see the joy and peace we have as your family. Guide our annual meeting today. Guide our year ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, our nation is moving forward from some contentious times. Help us be good stewards of the many blessings you have given this country. Help us practice loving our neighbors here and around the world. Help us be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for your help and relief from this pandemic. So many lives have been lost. So many careers and dreams ruined. So many businesses and educations and music concerts broken. We lament, Lord. We plead for healing. Guide our thoughts and our hands as we manage this medical disaster. We give you thanks for the healthcare teams and essential workers and teachers and community leaders who are laboring so long and hard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Brother Jesus, we lament the horrors of racism as we see and learn more each day. Show us what is our job to promote healing and justice. Give us the strength to learn painful facts and tragic history. Help us to see the truth. Let the truth lead us to act in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative spirit, what a beautiful world we have as a home. You are showing us better and more responsible ways to care for your creation. Help us welcome these opportunities to be better stewards of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for your church here at Grace and the Southeast Iowa ELCA Synod and the ELCA Churchwide in the United States, plus the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. We ask for your presence for our sister city, Iluqua, in Guatemala. Guide our leaders, be with our members, let your light shine to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our Savior, you know some of us are hurting. Personal illness, waiting for health news, sickness and injury in family and friends, grief for loss. We name them now aloud or in our hearts silently. We ask for your comfort courage to face the future, for good memories, and for strength to trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, all these things we ask in your Son's name, and grant whatever else you know that we need as we pray these words your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Bring your doubts, bring your fears, bring your hurt, bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. You are holy, righteous, and redeemed. Every time I fall, there are those who will call me a mistake. But that's okay, cause I hear a voice and it calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. In the world. In the world. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. There'll be days that I lose a battle. Grace says that it doesn't matter cause the cross already won. I'm learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. There'll be days that I lose the battle, Grace says that it doesn't matter, cause the cross already won the war. I'm learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. Cause I hear a voice, and it calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be enough And greater is the one living inside of me Than he who is living in the world In the world Receive this blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. First.
Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto 